Uh, also, uh, speaking about uh, um, women mayors, that's very important. Um, we were implementing, uh, as a liberal democracy, we were implementing many reforms recently, and one of them uh, was decentralization. Uh, and of course, you can see that the leadership of the country is mostly men like Volodymyr Zelensky or Valery Zaluzhny. Uh, so, but uh, the uh, survival uh, in the occupied towns and villages depends on who is the mayors there. And this is very important that Ukraine is so decentralized, again, unlike Russia. So even if a village is occupied and there is no connection, you cannot call somewhere, etc. but you have a mayor, and these, these mayors are often women. Uh, and, and you can somehow manage. I've met some of these wonderful uh, women mayors who uh, sometimes, uh, often actually, they have to evacuate because Russians target uh, um, Ukrainian elites. So um, I actually wanted to mention one name. It's Olga Suhenko. This, uh, uh, this is uh, a woman mayor of Matizhin in, in the Kyiv region. And many of you perhaps heard that she was abducted and killed together with uh, her husband and son. Uh, so this is why it is very, of course, important to evacuate. But those who evacuate, they keep having connection with, with their villages. And for example, uh, I've seen how one of the women mayors uh, coordinates evacuation of her villages uh, in the Kherson region to Krivirich, to safety, and she keeps managing the, the, this this small, you know, uh, universe of these small villages now packed into some dormitories in the city. So this is uh, just an in incredible um, civil society movement, and it is so obvious that both men and women are doing whatever possible for the victory, for, for the survival, that I think that uh, it will eventually uh, make us, uh, this war, this experience, this terrible experience of the war will eventually make us more equal. You mean, okay, I really, I personally, I also do believe that uh, gender roles, stereotypical gender roles will be shifted, but maybe because I'm an optimist, but now we've, we've all bec uh, have become realists, because as you, Victoria, really said, uh, I mentioned that this invasion has changed all of us, and we all became volunteers. Really, we do everything for for the victory, women, men, and uh, uh, all of us. And um, but you know what? That um, I really think about visibility, about visibility of women. Uh, of course, we all are Ukrainians, as you mentioned. We are all as one, acting for victory. But in uh, both in Western media but and also in, in Ukrainian uh, uh, infor informational space, um, I think that uh, not, um, as you said, Zelensky, Zaluzhny, and all the fighters are mostly the faces of our war and our fight. Uh, and uh, uh, we totally need to raise the visibility of uh, women uh, on any on any role or position, uh, maybe you all know and the, remember this uh, movie and the project Invisible Battalion, that was devoted to women uh, who were fighting but not officially registered in the army. It has changed now, and as uh, Yarina uh, is a, one of the examples that uh, now women can um, serve on any position in army officially. But still, there are so many invisible roles that women take in this work. Um, I will just, I have to mention one example. My, um, my husband is, um, has organized the uh, system of evacuation, of evacuating people from occupation, from occupied territories to uh, safety, to Zaporizhia. It's a very, uh, like mm, very difficult task, very difficult schemes, um, and one of the best drivers 
who drives this big bus and who saved already like thousands of uh, people bringing to safety is female driver, is woman. She is the best uh, driver in, in their organization, but no one knows about her. No one knows, and because it's first, on one hand, it's risky and unsafe to uh, bring up her name and face. But on the other hand, this everyday heroism of women on different, so many levels, is uh, amazing. We really have to acknowledge that the Russian mafia is really involved in this war. We cannot deny that. And when you understand that, you can also understand that a lot of the feminists and the amazing women that are doing extraordinary work here to prevent more human trafficking, especially sex trafficking of young uh, Ukrainian women fleeing the country to Europe, they are the ones that are strategizing to protect them. And if we name their names right now as journalists, we put all the operation at risk. So what we do is that is document every name and take photographs and write the, the biography because one of these days when you win the war, we will certainly write books and books about all of you that are doing this extraordinary work. But right now we have to protect you by just looking at these guys, macho guys, that go like, oh, well, well. And that's it, because they are like untouchable, because that's what patriarchal system does. <laughs>